Just in, Francis Ngannou, eager to knock out Anthony Joshua. A seismic heavyweight showdown was recently finalized between former unified champion Anthony Joshua and dangerous MMA crossover star Francis Ngannou. The battle between heavyweight icons will take place on March 8th in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And while Joshua enters as a substantial betting favorite given his sterling resume, many insiders warn Ngannou's frightening power gives him a real shot at pulling off the upset. Count former two-division title holder Ricky Hatton, among those who believe Ngannou has enough explosive force in his fists to leave Joshua counting stars on the canvas. In an interview with OLBG, the hitman laid out a reasonable best and worst case for Joshua in this intriguing matchup. While AJ's superior boxing polish makes him deserving as a solid favorite, Hatton cautions not to underestimate just how violently Nanu can turn fights with a single accurate blow. As Hatton explained, there's a big question mark, really. Was Francis Ngannou better than what we thought he was, or did Tyson take him too lightly? Either way, AJ was in good form against Otto Wallen showing good boxing ability, and his confidence will be back up now. The unknown aspect around Ngannou stems from his incredible pro debut last October. The whole boxing world was doubting whether he stands a chance against a boxing legend like Fury. Here's what Usyk had to say before this fight. Tyson Fury is world champion in WBC, yeah? Ngannou don't have a boxing fight, it's UFC fighter. But Ngannou pushed WBC King Tyson Fury to the limit, even scoring a third round knockdown before losing a controversial decision. The MMA legend proved far craftier and more durable than almost anyone expected on short pro experience. So Joshua faces a similar conundrum trying to gauge whether Fury took his foe lightly or if Nganu really is a diamond in the rough. Ricky believes Eddie Hearn smartly targeted this fight because AJ can gain massively whether Nganu again excels or gets exposed as out of his depth. A statement win showcasing superior skills scores major points positioning Joshua back into title contention. But even struggling early would indicate Fury likely overlooked his recent opponent. It's an ideal barometer bout for AJ's team, but that hinges on avoiding Ngannou's fight-changing power. As Hatton cautions, when you think of the size and punching power Ngannou has got, there's every chance he could knock AJ out. But the bigger picture is, Joshua is a very rounded, accomplished boxer. He's very skillful and heavy-handed. Essentially, while the Olympian gold medalist should hold pronounced advantages in versatility and ring IQ, his chin has failed before. If Naganu lands cleanly, all that skill flies out the window. However, assuming Joshua implements an intelligent game plan mixing his athleticism and boxing ability, Hatton believes he controls pace and distance comfortably en route to an impressive showcase victory. The blueprint involves capitalizing on conditioning and footwork edges to pile up points while avoiding the huge power swings. Let Nganu tire out before opening up offensively in the mid to late rounds. If AJ can stay disciplined employing that high ring IQ, Hatton contends he should succeed in highlighting the gap in experience and polish. As Ricky closed, it's the right time for Joshua because his confidence is sky high from the past couple of performances. If he goes out and there impresses where Tyson didn't, it'll work more in his favor when they sit down on the negotiation table and try and make the Tyson Fury fight. In essence, Hatton explains an impressive showing here unlocks the door again for Joshua to force his way into blockbuster title bouts after rebuilding momentum. Fans know the heavyweight division boils down to an elite trio of Fury, Usyk, and Joshua above all other contenders. If AJ wants to break back into that exclusive mix, he must make a statement against the intimidating Yanu. But that's clearly easier said than done with such frightening power across the ring. Nganu only needs a brief defensive lapse or well-timed counter to morph from an MMA striker into a certified boxing contender overnight. While still backing Joshua as a rightful favorite, Hatton makes clear none of that pedigree, talent, and determination matters if Nganu manages to plant a perfect bomb on his chin. All advantages get erased instantly turning the fight on its head if Francis connects clean. And considering we saw Nganu floor fury last October, his equalizing power threat is very real. Joshua can't afford mistakes looking past his adversary as a mere MMA crossover act. The slightest concentration lapse gets exploited. However, if AJ fights smart, makes Nanu miss and pay frequently for wide punches, and then implements his own offense after frustrating the brawler, he should succeed in showcasing his vast skill edges. 
That blueprint puts Joshua in a prime position to regain his belts in the near future while plunging Nganu's stock. But reckless exchanges give the Cameroonian knockout artist all the chaos he needs. So while AJ enters the rightful betting favorite for obvious reasons come March 8th, enough variables exist around Nganu's power and unknown improvement to make this must-see entertainment. Joshua holds the clear path to victory employing his versatile attacking combinations behind a stiff jab and solid footwork. But one slip shot getting countered changes the fight's entire complexion rapidly. Nganu has an equal chance of winning this fight in my opinion. He exceeded all expectations pushing Fury to the limit, even scoring an early knockdown. That breakthrough performance accelerating Nganu's legitimacy shocked the sport and unlocked major marketing dollars for his next showcase. Enter Saudi benefactors waving those lucrative currency notes to fast-track Francis straight into the Anthony Joshua sweepstakes. And while that may reek of boxing politics, promoter Eddie Hearn insists any hypocrisy claims around this fight miss proper context. You'll recall Hearn previously slammed Fury for granting Nganu an undeserved title shot rather than facing qualified contenders. He blasted it as an illegitimate mismatch. All-time great Lennox Lewis already called out Hearn for contradicting his prior dismissal of Nganu as a credible opposition. But Eddie argues the landscape changed completely based on Francis's exceeding expectations and possibly defeating Fury. As he explained, you can't say that a guy that dropped Fury and in many eyes beat him is not credible as an opponent. I said to Lennox that one of the big reasons we are taking that fight is because we have been told by His Excellency that the winner of that fight fights the winner of Fury Usyk. In Hearn's defense, reacting to an opponent's breakout performance warrants reassessing perceptions, even if the original take looks silly in hindsight. Nganu clearly displayed far slicker pure boxing skills than almost anyone forecast given his background. Rather than die on a hill protecting his initial analysis, Hearn adapted viewpoints to the fresh evidence at hand. That flexibility and reaction to new data seem reasonable once we move past initial criticism. However, as Hearn goes on to explain, an even bigger motivating factor was the irresistible prize dangled by Saudi officials to incentivize this fight, a guaranteed title shot against the Fury Usyk winner, Hearn enthused. So, we get a straight shot at Undisputed. So if Fury beats Usyk, which I hope he does, and we beat Nganu, you've got self-made the biggest fight arguably in the history of the sport. Essentially, by enticing Joshua to face the intimidating Nganu as a showcase opportunity, the Saudis promise the victor gets fast-tracked right into career-defining undisputed title bouts next. Whether facing longtime rival Fury or seeking revenge against Usyk, those bouts would be Joshua's golden ticket back to the pinnacle of the glamour division. It's a path too appealing to decline despite the obvious dangers present. And that irresistible, undisputed endgame is what really makes this sudden Nganu fight worth the risks in Hearn's mind rather than contradicting early criticism. Far bigger motivations move the needle beyond saving face. He explains, you know that if Fury beats Usyk and AJ beats Nganu, the whole world is gonna go, oh my god, it's AJ Fury for Undisputed. So yes, there are rematch clauses and contracts that have got to be respected, but also, you know, the vision of His Excellency. He's going to want to deliver for fans worldwide the biggest fight in our generation. Of course, to reach that climatic showdown against the Fury Usyk victor, Joshua must first pass the Nganu test without disaster striking. Considering Francis's fight-changing power, nothing guarantees Anthony leaves Saudi Arabia unscathed. We saw respectable heavyweight contender Joseph Parker ambush last weekend by a massive underdog, so while AJ enters the rightful betting favorite by a healthy margin, potential upset looms in a volatile weight class. By Hearn's own admission, Joshua holds no guarantees emerging victorious to lock down that undisputed title shot the Saudis dangle as bait, luring him into this risky matchup. As he concedes, massive obstacles stand between hypothetical megafights and current reality, chiefly Usyk threatening Fury's unbeaten streak and Nganu's hammer fists. Still, the blueprint Hearn outlines makes sense, targeting undisputed gold next. Even if AJ stumbling here means rebuilds take longer, the ultimate reward makes the gamble worthwhile. Thanks for watching this boxing news update. Let me know who you're picking to win between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou next month. Till then, hit like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See ya!